Hi, lesson 13, section 7.6, Applied Trigonometric Problems. And so this is our second day in section 7.6. We'll have lesson 14 to wrap up this section. Now this is how we label a triangle. Notice that alpha is across from little a, beta is across from little b, gamma is across from little c, and that's how we always label our triangles. That's nothing new. We talked about that in the last lesson. And so applied problems and refer to uh, application problems. Uh, we, we used to call them story problems, but we feel if we call them application problems, uh, we can fool you into not thinking they're story problems, and you won't have a phobia about them. But you shouldn't have a phobia about them. They're simply right triangle problems. You draw a right triangle out, you label the pieces they give you, and you solve for what they're looking for. So here's our first one. From the base of the Eiffel Tower, 80 feet from the center of its base, the angle of elevation to its top is 85 degrees. How tall is the Eiffel Tower? So I draw a right triangle. We always draw a right triangle. Notice that 85 degrees is the angle of elevation to the top of the tower, and it makes sense the tower is going up. We're 80 feet along the base here, along the ground, and now we simply have to set up a trig equation that will solve this. And you've got 85 degrees here, Eiffel Tower is opposite, 80 feet is adjacent, therefore we're going to use tangent. The tangent of 85 degrees is equal to the Eiffel Tower over 80. And then don't mess up this Algebra 1 stuff here from high school. Multiply both sides by 80. 80 tangent 85 degrees is equal to the Eiffel Tower. I picked a horrible variable name here, didn't I? Yep, I did. Uh, the nice thing is your calculator stays in degree mode for this entire lesson, and the Eiffel Tower is 914 feet. Although they would probably do it in meters and make fun of us for using feet, but French people make fun of us all the time. It's no big deal. Moving on. Oh, we love extension ladder problems in this course. A 22-foot extension ladder leaning against the side of a building makes a 70-degree angle with the ground. Careful on these extension ladder problems or ladder problems. We'll either give you the angle that the ladder makes with the ground or the angle the ladder makes with the building. Just make sure you know which one is which. How far up the building does the ladder touch? Oh my gosh, a right triangle. And so here's your building. It makes sense the building's going up. It looks like I used X this time. That makes more sense than writing building all the time. 70 degree angle with the ground and our 22 foot ladder represents the hypotenuse. And the question is how far up the building does the ladder go? So now we're dealing with the opposite and the only known side that we have is the hypotenuse so therefore we use sine. Sine 70 is x opposite over 22 feet the uh, hypotenuse. Again multiply both sides by 22 and we end up with 20.7 feet. And keep your keep your calculators in degree mode for this entire lesson. Oh, this is the big boy. To measure the height of a building, two sidings are taken a distance 50 feet apart. If the first angle of elevation is 40 degrees and the second is 32 degrees, what's the height of the building? And, and this is an interesting side note. This method we're going to talk about was actually used back in the 1930s um, to determine the height of Mount Everest. There was the trigonometric expedition out of England that actually spent a number of years taking measurements uh, from different distances and that's how they originally determined the height of Mount Everest. Uh, it has nothing to do with the course, I just thought it was interesting. So here's the setup and this is the right triangle instead of the right triangle type problem. Notice we have a right triangle over here to the right and we have a big right triangle that encompasses the whole drawing. Now you have to know that the larger of the two angles of elevation is, is going to, always going to be closer to the point of interest. In this case top of the building. As you get closer to your point of interest, your angle of elevation increases. We don't have to tell you which angle is closer. You need to know that if we say one's at 32 and one's at 40, then the 40 degree angle has to be the closer of the two. So notice they are 50 feet apart. So we took, an angle, we took a, a measurement of 32, we walked 50 feet closer, and we take another measurement of 40. That's enough information to determine the height of the building. What we don't know is this x value right here. That's the distance between the 40 degree sighting and the base of the building. For whatever reason, we can't determine that. So what we're going to do is set up two equations with two unknowns. And so if I look at the big right triangle, the tangent of 30 degrees is opposite over, now this entire adjacent side is 50 plus x. If I look over here, the small right triangle, and I've already set that one up, tangent of 40 is h over x. And if I multiply by x, I get the tangent x tangent 40 to be h. And if I look over here, I can substitute, I can take h out of this right here, take h out and put 
x tangent 40 degrees right there. It's just a substitution. All right. And now we're down to, we, we had two equations, two unknowns, which you know, we don't like to do that in algebra. Now we're down to one equation with one unknown. Now it's all algebra. It's all algebra. We've done our substitution. And here's a lot of math, but let's go through it real quick, one line by line. First thing you want to do is clear your denominator. So I multiply both sides by the quantity 50 plus x. Then I distribute the 50 and the x. So notice here I have 50 tangent 32 degrees, x tangent 32 degrees. And then what do we always do in algebra? We get all the variables on one side. So I subtract x tangent 32 degrees from both sides. And then I factor out an x. And on the right side I have the quantity, I have x times the quantity tangent 40 degrees minus its tangent 32 degrees, which I swear to God is not tangent of 8 degrees. Don't do that. And then I divide both sides by that quantity tangent 40 degrees minus tangent 32 degrees. Now I do the math. And in my calculator I actually do tangent 40 divided by tangent 32 and I get this point two one four two three. Oh, that's a lot of digits. And I do 50 tangent 32 and I get 31.2 basically. And then I divide those. Now I have determined x, which is not my answer. We were sent here to find h. So x comes out to be 145.84. So what's next? Well, whenever you have substitution, you have your variable. We were looking for h. Look, x tangent 40 degrees equals h. There it is. I have my x, 145.84, times it by tangent 40, and I get 122.4 feet. A lot of math going on here. A lot of math going on. But you know what? It's all algebra 1. After we set up this tangent function, these two tangent functions, we had substituted and we knocked it out. A lot of math here. A lot of math here. A uh, bit of 300 feet high casts a shadow 50 feet long. What's the angle of elevation of the sun? Whenever you're looking for an angle, you're always going to do inverse something or other. So the building's 300 feet long, 300 feet high, excuse me. The shadow is 50 feet long, and what's that angle of elevation down here? We do inverse tangent. Because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the inverse tangent of 6, we end up with about 80.5 degrees. Whenever you're looking for an angle, you're going to do inverse something or other. Now this is the last piece of one of the homework problems you're going to see. And that's converting feet per minute to miles per hour. And what I always remind people is that I don't, I don't memorize how to do anything. I let the units do the talking. So I set up 1,500 feet per one minute. And then I know I want to get rid of feet, so I put feet opposite. I know I want to get rid of minutes, so I put minutes opposite. And that lays it out for me. I don't have to memorize how to do this. I let the units do the talking, similar to back when we talked about converting degrees to radians and radians to degrees. Now, there are 5,208 feet in a mile, and there are 60 minutes in an hour. Notice the feet and the minutes cancel out, and it's only going to be left with miles per hour. And it's about 17 miles an hour, roughly. Let the units do the talking. Don't try to memorize how to convert units. You probably learned this in chemistry. A radio transmission tower is 200 feet high. How long should a guy wire be if it's attached to the tower 10 feet from the top and it makes an angle of 21 degrees with the ground? So here's our basic diagram. And, and, and so, you know, telling you that it was 200 feet high and then we backed it off 10 feet, I, I think most of us can take 200 minus 10 and get 190. A guy wire is just the wire that holds it all up. 21 degrees here is our angle. Uh, angle of elevation, I guess you could call it. And we want to know how far along here. Uh, I'm sorry, we want to know how much, how long the guy wire should be. I'm sorry, we're talking about the hypotenuse. So I say the sine of 190, because that's all we have here is 190. Uh, sine of 21 is equal to 190 over the guy wire. And then I multiply by the guy wire, and I divide by sine 21 degrees, and the guy wire comes out to be 530.2 feet. We could then determine how far it is along here, and we could have done that. Um, again, we know that 190, we could have used tangent to find at what point do you go away from the base to do that. A runner octagon is inscribed inside of a circle of radius 12 centimeters, approximately the perimeter of the octagon. So a couple things here. It's a regular polygon. In this case, it's an octagon. That means all the sides are exactly the same, same length. And it's inscribed in a circle, so I did the best I could here. That means each vertex has to have a tangent point with the circle. Looks like I kind of missed right there, but that's too bad. And then we have the center of, this center right here represents both the center of the regular octagon and the circle. 
And then a radius of 12 centimeters means coming out from the center to each of these vertices is going to be 12 centimeters. Now I've shaded one of these because we, we want to come up with the perimeter of this entire octagon. So I've shaded one of these because that X right there is the same X that you would see on all eight sides. So I'm going to bust that out. Oh, there it is. Look at that arrow. I'm going to bust that out and it's not a right triangle. So I turn it into a right triangle. It is a special triangle though in that it's isosceles. Only in isosceles triangles, when you drop an altitude from the vertex angle, you do two things. You split the opposite side in half and you split the vertex angle in half. So if we could determine theta, we could cut that in half and we'd know it. Now this only happens in isosceles triangles. Well, how do we figure out what this angle is? Well, each of these angles had to be congruent to each other, and there's eight of them. It's 360 degrees all the way around, so we took 360 divided by 8 and got 45 degrees. So each of these vertex angles is 45 degrees. Then divide them in half, you get 22 and a half. Hey, that's enough information. We can find y. And 2 times y would be x. 8 times x would be the perimeter. That's our step. Now you have to decide, is it sine, cosine, or tangent? Hey, it's sine. We do the sine of 22 and a half degrees. It's opposite over hypotenuse. It's y over 12. I multiply both sides by 12, and y is 4.6 or 4.59. Now leave it in your calculator. Don't clear your calculator. We've got two calculations to do now. If I take, if I double y, two times y, I get x to be 9.18. The perimeter is eight times x. I guess I could have taken 16 times y, but I seem to, I seem to enjoy myself doing it this way. I end up with 73.47, and it's roughly 73.5. That's the perimeter. Now, I'll tell you what, the perimeter of this octagon had to be less than the circumference of the circle. Had you calculated the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, you would have ended up in about 75 something. Your answer, the perimeter here, had to be smaller than that. So if you ended up with a perimeter that would have been bigger than the circumference, you knew at that point you had an error. And there's my check. I did circumference is 2 pi r. 2 pi times 12 is 75.4 centimeters. Therefore, I have a pretty reasonable answer. And actually, if you increase the number of sides here to say 1,000, I, I don't want to draw that out, but you could do the same math with a 1,000 uh, sided um, figure, octagon, uh, you would almost get exactly the same as the, as the circumference. And that was actually a method that was used to go backwards to find the, the value of pi. And that was a little historical lesson there that I'm not going to charge you for. Hey, that includes lesson 13. Get to work on your homework.